How's it going, guys? And welcome to some uh, some potato microphone live stream battles. So, guys, hopefully you're ready for some uh, some vampire counts. I think that's who we're going to open with. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, sorry about that. I just had to restart the stream real quick because there was some. Uh, I had to like change some of the bitrate settings and whatnot. But let me know how the sound uh, quality is. I'm using a kind of a very cheap headset. Um, I'm traveling at the moment in the in the glorious lands of Poland with my beautiful fiance over here, hanging out, doing it to it. Yeah, you want to have a go at a big YouTuber, huh? All right, well, we'll uh, we'll see what happens, bud. Look forward to look forward to having a showdown. Cool. Yes, and without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump in, and you know, after a minute or two, we'll uh, we'll get some quick battles going. Where's the shut up and take my money button? It should be there. Yeah, it should be. Shouldn't have gone anywhere. I think I have Streamlabs set up too, so uh, Randy Savage should be making an appearance. Yeah, it looks like it's all set up and good to go. If that's a, if that's the case. Yeah, it's okay quality. It's it's kind of like a you know one of those gaming headsets, and the quality is is very different for sure. But you know it's good for traveling and you know not having to pack up your whole like uh, recording rig and everything. YouTuber blood for the blood god. <laughs> Slay the youth, the foul YouTubers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun, though. Uh, anyone know why? Uh, so I do upload the streams, Martin. The last one, I just forgot to check the box because I'm actually... Uh, we have a second computer in Poland, so uh, I forgot to update the stream setting. So it didn't upload the last stream, but this one will indeed be uploaded. Uh, I think Stipe Miocic is going to win that, Jeremy. Yeah, because I think Alistair Overeem was kind of on a bit of a decline as it pertains to his, like, uh, phys you know, not his physical health, but, you know, he, he'd taken a lot of knockouts. So I think his chin was a little bit weak. Granted, I don't think anyone could have endured that that uh, punch from uh, Francis and Ganu. Yeah. Good, Sean, good. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, though. I'm really excited for... Uh, yeah, I probably won't watch the UFC live, but I'm excited to see like how it all goes down and everything. Yes, it'll be glorious. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think that Stipe is going to... I mean, he's a, a... I don't know if I would call him like a very technical boxer, like in the way of a professional boxer, but he's he's got really technical skills. I think that... Um, he'll be a little bit more cautious than uh, Alistair was. Yeah, it's working now. Yeah, it should be Anthony. We should be good to go. I had to restart the stream real quick, so there was a little bit of a shenanigans going on. I'm doing very good, Anthony. Thanks for asking, brother. All right, let's uh, let's jump into some quick battles, dudes. And if you guys have anything you want to see, let me know. Yeah, yeah, everything's going well. Thanks for asking, guys. How's it going, George and D Diddy Do? <laughs> it's a pretty great name. Hey Adam, thanks for the donation, man. Hope you're all doing well up in uh, in the Northlands. Says Turn, how you doing? It's so goddamn cold here. <laughs> it's pretty cold here too. So Adam, what's the what's the temperature where you're at? Let me know, man. I'm I'm quite curious. We can compare. Hey Quay, Quay, what's going on, man? Yeah, and Adam actually, uh, uh, Anna's been giving me some really good stretches and yoga stuff that's been helping my shoulder and my wrist out quite a bit. So. Uh, George, yeah, I used to do jiu-jitsu. I haven't done it in a while. I'm a little bit uh, out, of, out of form, but yeah, I used to do it. I did it for about a year, give or take. It was it was great. I loved it. Um, all right, so we're going to... Do we want to go with Manfred? I mean, Red Duke's probably better here, so we're going to go with him on the dragon. And uh, although Manfred's so solid here because he can get access to death as well, and Fate of Bune is really good against Chaos Knights. So I think we might go that route. We'll find out. Hey, Anthony, thanks for the donation, man. Yeah, we can get some Mel Gibson. Sure, not a problem. 19, negative 19 degrees. That's that's really cold, man. Yeah, that's next level cold. I was like complaining about what we had here in Poland, but that's that's. Yeah, that's that's cold. Jeez. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go with uh. <laughs> I actually hear the Randy Savage now on my headset, whereas I used to like not hear it before. It's so ridiculous. All right, sorry, back on focus. Uh, Sternsman, we definitely need some AP in the infantry, but we're going to go with a bit of a Zerging type strategy because when you get Manfred, he's so expensive that you know you kind of want to uh, go a little bit wider to compensate for his cost, I think. So we're also going to get double Terror Geist. It's really good against Shaggoths and uh, gives you some heavy punching in your army. Top of that, we'll get a Corpse Cart, although Mortis Engines are really, really good in this matchup, but with the double Terror Geist, it's going to be a little bit hard to justify the Mortis Engine. Um, but perhaps we do that... Yeah, I think it's it's just such a good tool against them. 
So right now we have a Terrorgeist. Uh, he's going to be riding dirty with Manfred. We could cut one additional unit, get like some Blood Knights or something like that. But I think we want to play like a bit of a, a Death Star with like Fate of Buna and stuff. So yeah, we'll see. Oh, you guys will get Goblin Armies. Don't worry. How's it going, Zergle? Yes, it'll be good. Uh, what do you do when you feel unaccomplished with the day? Any tips? Uh, so Blixton, man, you, you just kind of got to ask yourself. Well, I'm not sure at what stage in your life you're at, if you're in like high school or college, but there, I mean, that definitely for me would dictate it. Like the kind of things I would use to make myself feel accomplished in a day. But let me know and I'll give you some, uh, some, some feedback and everything. I was not kidding about the mic. That's very true. So my apologies. Hopefully you guys can, can bear with it. All right, so um, we have our AP. We have our kind of swarming. The Mortis Engine is obviously going to be supporting the main core. We could cut one of these guys, actually, and then that would allow us to get some Blood Knights. And uh, do we want Dire Pack? No. I mean, the Dire Pack would be okay. This is, you know, a fair amount of anti-large. Let's get some Skeleton Spears. And, uh, and yeah, that should be it. So from here, I think we just Chevron up our front line. We can just make this guy nice and juicy. Although it's probably better to split it up over the Skeleton Warriors as well. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Good luck to my opponent. Bleeben. Look forward to uh, our showdown. Oh, he said something. He said, have fun. I will. I will have fun. Two days ago, 13 of the top 15 coldest places on the earth were in Canada. <laughs> 13 of the 15. That's brutal, Adam. Uh, you know, uh, Quay Quay, the reason I'm not going Cryptors is, uh, number one, I'm a little bit rusty at the game. But, you know, uh, th there's kind of a philosophy that a lot of uh, uh, Chaos players are simply going to use Halberds and Giants. Uh, that's kind of the very old school way to smash the vamps, because Manfred's good against that, though, because he has the Dragon Breath as well as the Fate of Buna to work down the Chosen. Um, yeah. Yeah, the double Fireball is, is risky, but Fireball can be dodged. So if you're if you're really, you know, on top of that and able to side strafe and everything. Plus, he's not going to be able to get a good angle on us to fireball because we have Manfred and a Terrorgeist. So we have a, we have some countermeasures. It's it's a bit of an experimental army, guys. So just bear with me. Like I haven't tested this army really. I just kind of want to theorycraft on stream a little bit. So let's get some skeleton warriors here, some here, and then the kind of the core of our army is going to be like Graveguard and things like that because they're just so sturdy and solid. So Graveguard actually did get buffed from Mortal Empires too. So they they got quite a bit better. You could get away with a corpse cart here too, but um, you know chaos doesn't really have the best ranged, so you, they're not going to be able to punish a more ascension like other factions would. Blood knights can be in the back; they can be in group three. Let's put the skeleton spears. Skeleton spears are pretty good against Shagus, although not as good since the uh, changes to their armor and everything. So, all right, let's get these blood knights just kind of lurking. And uh, live stream shouldn't be offline. This microphone isn't very bad. That's good. I can't see anything. I just see potatoes with the microphone on it. I think that's just you, Nicholas. Yeah. Turin says, uh, I'm in uni, but holiday leave right now. Well, do you have any, like, uh, I mean, like, do you have, like, fitness interests? Or do you, you know, are you into, like, writing? Or, like, what are your creative outlets? Yeah, let me know. Hey, Lucas, thank you. Uh, thank you for saying it's not too bad. That helps. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cool, so let's go see what's going on with our opponent. Oh, and I forgot to put these guys in uh, group one, so we can go ahead and move them up like so. And great. So everybody's doing it to it. We can put them in group four for now, it's fine. So for his army, he has a ton of AP units, which is good. It's gonna take him forever to get through our fodder. Uh, triple Shagget, pretty standard. So we just need to be very efficient with getting our Blood Knights on the Shagus and keeping that Mortis Engine kiting those guys out. And if we can do that, we should be in good shape. So the Death Streak is actually pretty good versus like entity models like these guys. So um, I'm actually gonna see if he's not paying attention, I'm going to see if I can get a direct breath attack on that fire sorcerer. And then we can go ahead and get a breath attack right here as well. So if we get lucky and he's not paying attention, we might be able to roast the sorcerer right here. So we get the roast. Oh, that's that's pretty good. Then from there, we're also going to spirit leech. We really just want to take that guy out as fast as possible. Great. So the blood knights, we can go ahead and just kind of posture them and just kind of sit out and, and just wait and see what's going on. He might be using some sort of a fireball so we can try and dodge it. And it looks like eh, it does hit us, but pretty negligible damage for sure. Great, so let's uh, move forward. We can get the Blood Knights in here, going after these guys. Terror guys can go here as well. And Manfred, we're basically just going to use Fate of Buna on, uh, yeah, Chaos Warriors is good for now. Great, so the Cloud Nagash is going to be something we just need to be very careful with, because he's obviously going to want to target that. But the Blood Knights got a really good surround so far. So, yeah, it's going pretty well. Let's go ahead and pop this. These guys can go here, and the Mortis Engine we can just kind of keep nearby and just keep cackling and trolling. So, now the Chaos Sorcerer is alone. We can go ahead and Spirit Leash him. A nice Burning Skull from our opponent is going to roast a fair amount of our formation, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's pull the Skeleton Spears back here. More Dissension can go here, and the Blood Knights, we can go ahead and regroup. Hopefully we can get his caster here. That'd be pretty nice. Let's pull this Terror Guys back out, because it's being focused by, you know, three Shagus, which is very tough. And maybe we'll get his Death Caster. 
we want to pull back though, it's it's he's doing a pretty good job like getting an engagement on us here. Let's do this, let's get the mortis engine back in there. And good, we're able to get away. So now we can go ahead and use his breath attack on this guy and this guy, Manfred, can get up in the air. And the mortis engine, just kind of kite back. And you know, we can like pull back the blood knights to kind of cover us and everything and we should be okay. So we'll get Manfred here. We'll get this guy going out there on that formation. Although those guys have halberds, so that's a little bit dicey, but we can re-engage him for now. So as caster, we can go ahead and spirit leech him and the mortis engine can go ahead and re-engage. The blood knights we want to, actually, let's see if we can get a free pick right here. That would be really good if he's not like paying attention. I think we might be able to. So Mortis Engine's going to kind of keep draining. The Stereogeist is kind of baiting the Shagus a little bit, which is good. And uh, the Blood Knights are having a little bit of problems, but he pulls his Halberds, which is definitely a solid play. So let's go ahead and switch over to the Vampirism here. Get a Zombie Summon. We'll get the Graveguard kind of pushing. And hopefully the Stereogeist gets away. That's great. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of get it on those Marauders over there where it's safe. Keep this Mortis Engine kind of, uh, you know, cackling about and having a good old time. Pop this. Get these guys over here. And, yeah, we can just engage for now. So the bounce power is definitely in our favor at this point. Um, the Shagus are doing okay, but they haven't really done huge massive damage. Um, he's going to try and snipe Manfred. That's definitely what he probably wants to do. So let's get these guys here. The terror guys can hopefully help tear out some of these guys. And let's actually just get a downhill charge. And good. All right. So, um, yeah, he's, he's going after that pretty good. But the slowing debuff is really, really helpful here. So Manfred's just going to kind of fly overhead. And we could use a nice little roast attack. Let's actually get it on those Chaos Warriors over there. And this guy, we want to pull back. We definitely don't want to lose it. That would be very, very, you know, catastrophic. So these guys are going to pull back up. We might have gotten a little bit of friendly fire there, but Colex kind of alone right now. So let's actually use the Invocation of the Heck here, switch to death, and yeah, we're, we'll feign a charge, and then we can just pull back. I think that should be okay. So the Blood Knights, we need to kind of protect this Mortis Engine. It's going to be pretty important, and if we can isolate one of these guys, I think that could be really, really good value for us. So let's actually get the Blood Knights going here, the Mortis Engine. We'll get all this stuff going. And Bounce Bar is pretty even now, but this is a nice little trap right here on this guy that we got. And all right, so Manfred does have a Spirit Leech. We can go ahead and pop that on, um, we can pop that on this guy right here. See if we can kind of work him down a little bit. Mortis Engine's in pretty good shape for the most part, but Manfred is susceptible to getting beaten down here. So we need to pull back and uh, see how it's going. All right, great. So the Mortis Engine, let's kind of keep kiting it up and through. Manfred's back up in the air. And the one Shagath is pretty low. Um, we can get a Breath Attack on him. Maybe it'll do some pretty good damage. We'll find out in a second. So we get that breath attack. It's a pretty solid hit. Not the best I've had, but yeah, nothing to nothing to write home about. So we're gonna go ahead and engage here with Manfred. Hopefully, be able to take out his caster real quick. It's looking a little bit dicey though, for sure. We do have a zombie summon, so let's go ahead and pop that in like all these marauders and like low tier troops. And the mortis engine we can kite over here. Manfred we can kite over here as well. Let's get these guys engaged. Yeah, because you can see if we land Manfred for too long, he's gonna get just jumped on by those shagas, which is not fun. So let's kite back. These guys are pretty low. Let's see if we can kind of isolate some of these guys here. Get these guys going. And the Skeleton Spears, we want them to be fighting the big nasty Shagats. Great, so we did get one of them off. A lot of my opponent's troops are breaking. So let's kind of just push after the Shagas. And we can use Manfred to chase down this guy here, which is going to be good. And this Mortis Engine can kind of just drain and assist in the fight versus the, the big boys here. So we want to cycle charge in with the Mortis Engine. That's definitely going to be one of our stronger angles. Make sure to pop this every chance we get. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can just get this Shagath off the battlefield. Yeah, so we get a nice attack, and then we just kind of pull back, kind of keep chasing, and yeah, because we don't want to, that would cost us the game if he's able to get that. Whereas right now, the bounce power is a little bit in our favor, I would say, and we do have this like really nasty swarm of like fodder units and mortis engines, which as long as we keep pulling it back, we're going to get some pretty good like healing value and other things like this. So I think at this point, we probably want to save up for, uh, yeah, let's actually just, we need to like bait the charge. That slow though is really, really good. Manfred, can he get in there? I think he can and get a good attack, maybe. We can sit for a second, use the Mortis Engine to kind of attack Kolek, and it looks like we do break that Shagath, which is really huge. That's good. All right. So let's run the Mortis Engine over this way, summon some zombies right here to, as we kind of retreat, and hopefully that'll kind of screen some of these guys down. Oh no, get out of there. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of there, Captain. So we took a lot of damage there. That could potentially get our opponent back in the game. We'll kind of chase here, see if we can uh, do a little something, something. Just kind of keep this big blob, you know, going forward, doing its thing. And we're probably not going to be able to get the Sword of Power unless we, like, land. But this Mortis Engine's in really, really good shape. So let's just kind of keep trolling about, seeing if we can drain and route, like, a lot of his troops. But I don't know if we can afford to land Manfred anymore. Bounce Power is starting to shift in the favor of my opponent, for sure. Yes, go. Go faster. <laughs> All right, so this guy's going pretty quick here. Yeah, the Cloud Nagash is kiting. It's, it's having a good old time. We might want to just try and jump over here and see if we can get some damage. Pull this Mortis Engine in. 
we do have yeah, a fair amount of healthy troops. Manfred gets in there. You know, he should be able to tear out some of those guys. Let's see if we can switch over here real quick. Maybe finish off the Shagath. Oh no, the Mortis engine's being hunted. And can we get this guy? Oh, we do We do actually shatter him, which is good. So now, now we can get away from Kolek, hopefully. Because if Kolek gets a couple of good attacks, that could, that could be it for us. Great game so far, though. This has been a really, really good one. Triple Shagath is definitely the way to go. I think the, the big issue with my build was probably the Blood Knights. They were really inefficient. Because um, Shagaths are heavily armored now, so you need to take that into account. All right, so we're going to kind of uh, just go all in right now, see if we can do a little something something, maybe get a good surround. But that's going to be it, I think. Yeah, this is this one's looking pretty grim. You're having some buffering, huh? I'll take a look at the stream quality after this game. Yeah, that was a really good GG. Really GG, man. That was great. Yeah, the uh, Cryptors are pretty good, too. I honestly think the... Because, um, you know, Triple Shagath is very, like... Uh, Specialist type build for vampire counts, and I think if I had another terror guy, that would have been really good. All right, GG to my opponent. The uh, GG to my opponent it was a fun game. All right, so let's get in there. Halberds were definitely good. Uh, you know, you stand your shagas on top of the halberds that can then counter terror guys and different things like this. A little bit sloppy with the execution of like my blood knights and some of those other units, but but still, it was, it was a really good game. He played super well for sure, like really really well played to my opponent. He outplayed me. Um, yeah, I mean, Chaos has some pretty good builds for his vampires now. Um, you can even use Chosen with Halberds and use, like, Giants and stack them. But honestly, I think, like, Shagas are way better because they can chase Mortis engines and they can hard switch really quickly, whereas Giants are very, like, slow and waddling. Yeah. Yeah, Skeleton Spear support. Yeah, having more Skeleton Spears could have been really good, too. I was kind of just experimenting with Blood Knights, to be honest, to see how it would function. Yeah, I'll play Lizard, man. Sure. I'd love to. Yeah, and thanks again for joining today, guys. It's, uh, it's good to have all you guys here. Let me go ahead and check the stream quality and everything. Uh, yeah, we had a couple drop frames earlier in the stream, but it looks like everything is uh, relatively stable now, which is good. Hopefully we don't get the, the found match bug here. Um, no, Cryptors do not have a bonus for Slarge, but the reason why on paper they're pretty good against Shagus is because they have good mass, so they can pin the Shagus down and poison them. So let me go ahead and switch back here. And all right, there we go. But that was a, a great build for my opponent. Laura Fire is pretty good because it can cut through chaff and also make your shagots to just hit like absolute trucks. Ungrim and a max amount of slayers. <laughs> oh man, that's a little bit troll. I don't know if I'll do that, to be honest. Hey Tristan, how's it going, man? Yeah, it's a different time for sure. You know, the Americans are all still asleep. <laughs> Most of them on a Saturday morning at like eight. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a whole new, whole new world. I hate the found match bug, it's so annoying. It's so troll. Uh, Hex race first Demogriff Knights. I haven't tried that one too much, to be honest. Although it'd probably go okay for those guys. Hey, Draniel. Glad to hear that, man. Can't wait to uh, see everything. And and of course, we can we can jump on Discord and chat about all that and, and have some fun. All right, so we're going to go here. Then we're going to refresh it. And hopefully, we can get a game. I can't believe the found match bug is like still a thing, right? Like after after lo so long of a game being out. Cl you closed down your house yesterday. Congratulations, man. Yeah, th things are moving moving up for you. Yeah, we'll get we'll get some battles in and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, no more potato internet. No, I've 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 experienced the potato internet myself. Come on, get us a battle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, mass layers can work. It's just, uh, it's, it's a little corny, for sure. All right, so let's go lizard mid. Let's, let's, Jabba, Jabba needs some fury, I think. Jabba's seriously my favorite, one of my favorite lords in the game to use. So, depending on what my opponent picks, we can uh, kind of switch from there. Got too much MMR? Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'll just keep playing Haggard builds, and then I'll tank down and into the pits. Uh, I'm sure there will be uh, bouncing changes, like when uh, Norskan everyone gets re-released. I, I bet you there will be some bounce changes. All right, so we're definitely going to go with Jabba. Uh, Harmonic Convergence is pretty good. So is Curse of the Midnight Wind. They're all they're all so good. Like honestly, this is probably the uh, more competitive like array of abilities here, and you just kind of choose between Harmonic Convergence and Curse. But probably go with Harmonic because you can spam it, which will trigger Rolling Skies. Uh, that's pretty good. Missile resist. I mean, it's it's relatively cheap. It does also give nine melee defense, so it's it's not terrible. Um, Soros Scarvets, do we want to go with that? There's a multitude of routes you can go here. Um, we're probably just going to go regular Soros Warriors right now. A couple of those guys, so let's go a little bit wider with some, uh, what map are we on too? 
I can't remember what this map looks like. It's a little bit bothersome. Let's actually get some shields in case he has a ton of archers. And uh, we can get some skink cohorts, a couple of those guys to throw their spears and just kind of wrap around the back. Chameleons, I like quite a bit. I think they're very good. Yeah, we'll get Mel Gibson next. Uh, no, Henry, I'm not Australian. <laughs> no respect for your night shift. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we'll do this. Let's actually get a laser dino too. I haven't used one of those guys in a long, long time. Then we can get double skink chiefs. Uh, they're very annoying, but you do need something to poke and like harass a star dragon. Otherwise, it's just going to just have a field day all over Jabba. So it's a little bit different than probably your, your typical lizardmen army. I think it's going to be okay. We might be able to cut their vivification crystal. I think we probably should and get some sort of a like, you know, anti-large. We could get even just get some halberds or something to deal with like dragon princes and stuff. That would probably be really good because otherwise we don't have like the best answers to dragon princes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually, now that I look at it, that seems like it would be really scary. But Jabba's, you know, Jabba's a force of nature. He can he can do some work. So let's go ahead and pump these guys up and uh, see how it goes. Croc scores. This is probably one of the matchups in which Croc scores are pretty good. And no, I've never tried cross-country skiing. Hey, Ido. Yeah, welcome, man. This is, uh, you get to be on the, the Haggard microphone stream. So I'm using a headset. I normally use a very high quality microphone, but I'm on the road right now. What's this robot turn? Yeah, it is robot turn. Yeah, absolutely. It's potato turn. Yeah, we're just kind of trying out builds though. Like uh, there's very like meta established builds, but I, I like to experiment with different things. But if he goes like an archer build, this will work. But if he goes very heavy dragon princess, this could be pretty scary, scary you know? Yeah, like, but the, the freaking, the skink chiefs are so annoying. Those guys can just like dart and annoy people for centuries. <laughs> Boss nast. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so let's get these guys. We're going to put them on the outside of the formation here. And you also have to remember these little skinks, the skink cohorts. They have, they're actually decent anti-air options against like phoenixes and things like that. So um, we'll put Jabba back here. Uh, just have to make, he's pretty hard to snipe too, but we're going to have uh, some temple guards stacked on top of him just to make sure. And uh, good. So these guys can be group three up here. These skinks can be in group two. And I like to keep them in front just in case like enemy Illyrian Reavers are able to kind of close the distance. We want to make sure they're in good shape. So this isn't the best map for the, the laser dino. Although I think if we just kind of wait back here and the skinks can be up here, chiefs here, and then yeah, this makes it a little better because then at least he has to come to us. Okay, let's do it. Good luck to my opponent. Let's have some fun. Yeah, this is this is old school, Daniel. We're taking it back to the old school. Potato makes vodka. I approve vodka, Mike. All right. All right, let's see. This is a cord play. You guys are ruthless. So he's got archers. Uh, he has some Walmart dragons. So Walmart dragons are like the, uh, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like the low tier dragons. That's what I call them. I just call them Walmart dragons. So um, we're going to start just kind of darting him and just being annoying and harassing with our skinks and whatnot. We should be able to drag down the sun dragon pretty easily. So um, yeah, the skinks can just kind of run and kite back now. And look at the damage they do. It's, it's that's so nasty. As far as casters, uh, looks like he does have life, which is pretty standard protocol. So we can just kind of kite back, keep just, oh my god, that dragon is just getting put in a trash can. Okay, so we can kind of posture right here. We do have nets as well. So, um, man, that is some huge, huge damage. Just kind of keep shooting, having a good old time at our opponent's expense. We do have nets, we have ruination of cities, we have a ton of options. So, yeah, that's good. Shooting white lines isn't a bad choice. They do have missile resist, but still, just kind of wearing them down is, I would say, worth it. All right, great. So these guys, uh, you have to make sure they are... Uh, not toggled to uh, skirmish because they are like technically an infantry unit and you want them to be you know doing their thing great so our little chameleons are having a good time now it's probably a good time to run them back we'll get our laser dino kind of shooting at the sun dragon and great so we're getting some pretty good skirmishing going on i would say nice a little direct hit although it didn't seem to do the most damage and these guys we just want to like sit on his lord and run out there and good so Jabba can uh i don't know if we want to like net per se we can probably just get ready to engage here so engage the source here here and here these guys we can pull over in the back and kind of get them ready to party. These guys here, and good. So yeah, this guy, we can just kind of keep shooting his main dragon here, and good. So Jabba is definitely a, a massive powerhouse. So for him, we want to use Banishment on the archers and kind of try and finish those guys off with those abilities here. And the Temple Guard, since there's no like real heavy threats, we can just engage them down here on the main side. These archers, we can run around the back, and Jabba should be running in. I'm not sure why he didn't listen to my uh, command order to run him in. So we'll pop our Harmonic Convergence on these Soros Warriors and Apotheosis as well on my group that's taking quite a bit of damage. Now let's actually get these Javelins on the big guy here and shoot at the dragon here. And our Skink Chiefs doing a pretty good job taking a little bit of damage. Can pull him back, use Cold Blood, and good. All right, 
So Jabba the Hutt's in the mainline fight. He's going to be uh, pretty tough to kill. We're going to use the Ruination of Cities here. And this dragon is getting messed up. So we can go ahead and engage. And um, is there anything else I want to do with Jabba? A decent Ruination. Not the best one I've seen, but it's still it's doing the trick. These little javelins we can throw here. Just kind of keep shooting at his lord up in the air. And we do have the shield of the old ones. Let's pop that there. We also have nets, but there haven't really been a great occasion to use nets. But I think Jabba could help finish those off. Yeah, great. Cool. So we're going to reform ranks with our skanks. These guys can throw up here. These guys can throw here. And good. Yeah, so far so good. Apotheosis, uh, we're going to go ahead and use that to heal the hut man himself. So we're going to drag that right there. Just kind of keep running. And let's go ahead and drop a net to pin his dragon down. So it's a little bit tricky to do it when you're being chased. But you kind of cast it right behind you like that. And now he's going to get pinned. Oh, but I hate when that happens. It's like, it's kind of a bit of a buggy thing. But um, these skanks, we can go ahead and engage them in melee. The chiefs, we want to keep, you know, having them shoot here. Jabba's in pretty good shape now, so we're going to pull back Gary, our laser lizard, for now and pop Harmonic Convergence in the mainline fight with those Temple Guard. Let's see if we can, yeah, have them kind of engage down there. And it looks like his Walmart Dragon has been routed off. Great. So Jabba, like, has enough mass that you can usually charge in and do some heavy work, so we're going to do that. Our little Chameleons have Reform ranked here, so let's have them shoot his Lord. And Jabba, Jabba's a, okay. We can, we can kind of keep pulling back with Jabba. We just want to keep, like, working down his Lord, though. That's going to be the most important thing. So let's throw some jabs here and this guy if we can and that'll be good and then we can actually turn and fight because so i think we have enough support let's actually switch the the chiefs into melee and see if we can kind of ramrod in there and uh we can probably just get this bastillet on melee but yeah he's getting like 3v1 right now this is going to be a pretty good situation for us so let's go ahead and apotheosis we want to fight these little skinks can go ahead and engage as well and it looks like we do have our source warriors in the back on his archers which is going to be pretty powerful so Great, so his lord has to run here, so let's pull these guys up. Let's get Jabba the Hut. Oh, a nice little breath attack for my opponent, for sure. So let's get the Skink Chiefs back up in the air. One of them does have cold blood still, so we want to use that to heal the other Skink Chief. And this Bastilodon, we can use it to actually maybe shoot there. Let's see if we can actually get up there and, and do it to it real quick. Great. So the Chiefs are back online. We can get them out in the air, have them start shooting his lord again. And we should be able to shut down his missile play in the back line, for the most part. And this Walmart Dragon is definitely in some trouble. So now he has this big blob of, like, Phoenix Guard here. So we're going to use that Banishment. Hopefully get some pretty good value. We'll find out. And, uh, ooh, yeah, that was a real, real juicy one. So that really kind of tilted the bounce power in our favor. You can see the Walmart Dragon up in there is trying its best, but, you know, it's too cheaply made. He needs the, needs the Star Dragon. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pop Apotheosis on Jabba to heal him up. And he's really strong in melee himself. Like, he is no pushover. We'll get these guys shooting the Dragon. And everything else seems to be going good. Let's pull our Laser Dino out of melee there. And hopefully we can kill his lord right here. No, we might be able to. We don't have enough for a net. Ruination of cities can go down. Let's go ahead and pop that right over there. Come on, get him. Get him. So we do have poison. And it looks like our laser dino is you know, relatively online. Chiefs are, chiefs are doing their thing here. Although I think maybe we send them into melee and just go for it. Yeah. Harmonic convergence on Java is going to be pretty strong. We do have cold blood too. So that's going to give us like a lot of stopping power. So yeah, the chief's coming in in melee. It should be enough to take those guys down. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's got definitely an advantage in terms of like infantry and everything. But our skanks, let's see if we can kind of reform ranks with those guys. And I think his lord should go down here. Like we have so much pressure on him right now. Yeah, there he goes. And you can see the balance is starting to come in our favor. It's actually cold blood Jabba now that we've kind of broken this guy. And then we just got to go ramshackle what's left of his forces. And these guys can go here, have them start shooting. And uh, Jabba, where are you at, dog? You having a good time up here? All right, great. Yeah, so that's a... Uh... <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go after him. Oh, there he goes. He's down. All right. So now we just kind of push in, finish it off. Yeah, my ruination of cities were <laughs> pretty bad. That's the thing. Ruination of cities. Like honestly, if you were playing in a tournament, I don't know if it'd be worth bringing. I mean, maybe as a utility, but it's very uh, it's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, we need a preview of a multiplayer match of the Tomb Kings. Yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as those come out, I'll make sure to do that. Yeah. The ruination. I'm sorry. You know, Jabba the Hutt's just a wild man. You can't you can't tell him what to do. Turn, if you do Beastmen versus the Lizardmen, I will plant apple seeds across all the United States, creating a good and healthy source of food for all Americans. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? That was a good joke, Anna. Anna likes it. She's 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 giving me the, like the the Commodus. You know, in Gladiator when he does like the thumbs up, thumbs down thing. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, so he's playing Empire, so who do you guys want to see versus Empire? I mean, there's there's a bunch of fun choices for sure. Could play Chaos. We always do that, though. Yes. Yeah, Banishment is pretty good. Banishment seems to stay more in its, like, area of effect. 
Yeah, I have that. I have all the Intel stuff back home in California. I'm in Poland right now visiting my lovely fiance. We've been having a great time. Uh, I kind of want to play Skaven. Skaven versus Empire is kind of a very classic matchup, right? So, Pestilent Breath's good. Blessed with Filth, Vermintide. Eh, Wither. I don't know if we really... We'll bring it just as a safe in case he goes heavy, uh, heavy Greatswords. Warlock Engineer is pretty much a staple, uh, and the reason you bring him is to get the uh, Howling Warp Gale, and that allows you to like lock down uh, flying, flying lords and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, great book of grudges. Definitely some synergy with the uh, Shield of the Old Ones. All right, so we got this Gaven. Plague Monks are really, really solid here. Um, Anti-Infantry, they do well against pretty much everything. Uh, aside from that, what map are we on? So we're on a very forested map, so we don't want to play the artillery game. We're going to get a Doom Wheel, I think. Uh, Doom Wheels are just always pretty good. And a couple Rat Ogres just to like deal with Reichsguard and, and things like that, kind of charging in. And uh, do we want to get a Furnace? Empire does have quite a bit of like gun pressure, so you do need to watch out for that. But I think we're going to get a Plague Priest on the Furnace. It's really good against like low-tier Empire State Troops. And what you do with that is you just get the Vermintide, and you just use that to shut down backline play. It's uh, it's pretty strong. It does make our army very thin, though. That's that's the one thing you got to watch out for. Gutter Runners with Poison are super annoying. Um, we can get one group of Spears, I think. Yeah, are these Clan Rats? Yeah, that's with Shields. Eh, we don't really need the Shields, but I mean, what else do we have to spend our money on? So, front lines, Plague Monks, Furnace. These guys uh, can apply some pressure in the air. It's And we have our AP through the Rat Ogres and the Doom Wheel. I, I think it's a pretty good build. Yeah. Can you, uh, Hell Pits aren't good in this matchup, in my opinion. That's just my humble opinion. Yes. Because Empire has a lot of guns and nets, so when you have, like... And the Doom Wheel's just, you know, way better for a cheaper cost. There are matchups in which Hell Pits are pretty good. I actually like them against Beastmen quite a bit. Uh, they can, like, tear out their infantry and, and do pretty well, pretty good for themselves, yeah. Anti-large bonus is good here. And before four units of Demis. Well, if he has Demis, I'm not going to be super stressed, because, like, we can drag them down through attrition. Like, what anti-large targets does he have? I mean, he can get the Furnace and the Rat Ogres, but... And I guess the Doom Wheels. I think that would be pretty good. But, like, that's risky to go for Demis, right? Like, it's it's a bit of an overcommitment. So if he does that, then, you know, he definitely definitely deserves deserves the glorious win that is coming his way. All right. It's showtime, guys. Rodents, unusual size in the, the Fire Swamp, unheard of. Johnny Appleseed, I, I hear you, man. All right. So let's get these, uh, these Plague Monks kind of lined up in the front. It's a pretty thin front line, but we get a lot of auxiliary power from, uh, you know, we have two Mortis Engine effects. We have the Warlock and the Plague Furnace, so that's going to be scary. Spears in the back just to kind of help out and bolster. Gutter Runners in the front, just getting a little bit crunk and wild. And uh, Rat Ogres can kind of just be bolstering our formation here. Definitely a solid unit. And the Doom Wheel. Yeah, the Doom Wheel we probably want to keep high and tight because we don't want it to get netted and isolated, so we're going to keep it with our main army. All right, good luck to my opponent. Let's have some fun. Uh, I don't know. Bretonia is hard to play. They can, I mean, they can be made to work for sure. It's just, like, compared to how easy, like, factions like, you know, Blizzard Men, Skaven, Dark Elves, Beastmen are to play. You know, pretty much everyone else is way easier. I don't know. Greenskins are hard to play too, I think. Yeah, that would be, that would be my humble opinion. Hell Pitch Abomination. Those are fun units. I do really like using them. They're fun. Just not in the Empire matchup. Although Empire doesn't really bring a ton of guns against Gaven usually. It's a little bit risky because they have so much density. So bringing powder weapons against like dense units is, is not always the most effective. Because Gaven can go super wide with tons of infantry too. They, they can play so many different ways. That's like why they're, you know, very powerful in my humble opinion. Oh no. Oh, that's so bad for him. <laughs> These are uh, free company militia. So we're going to get in there and, and just have a knockdown drag out fight. <laughs> that's a cool build for my opponent though. Getting a little bit hog wild with the uh, free company. So these guys can go over here, intercept those, and these guys can obviously chase them down because they're 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 very quick rats. Oh yeah, these plague monks are gonna mince meet these guys, I think. We're gonna take some fire though for sure. Cool build though, I definitely dig it from my opponent so far. So let's get the Doom Wheels and have them kind of intercept the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Kind of fight here, fight here. And the Plague Furnace we want to push up here as well. And uh yeah, I think we're gonna need a little bit of stopping power right here. So let's go ahead, get the rat ogre and everyone else kind of going over here. We can pop the Blades of Future Faction, which are going to give us poison. Definitely going to be very helpful. And we should be able to just wreck these guys over here. Great. So the Doom Wheel's coming in here. It's actually surprisingly good against these type of units. These Plague Monks we can kind of screen around here. Let's pull these guys here. And the Furnace. So we're having a bit of a two-pronged fight, but I think it should go in our favor. All right, great. So we have a Mortis Engine effect here, and Skrulk can start summoning some filthy rats to shut down his backline pressure from those guns. 
and the plague monks can go ahead and intercept those guys and all right great everything's going to code for the most part his troops are getting pretty beat up we do get the vermin tide in the back and where the heck did his guns go oh they're kind of like pinned in melee so on this side of the battlefield looks like it's pretty much a complete route so we're going to pull these uh these gutter runners around the back and just use this plague furnace to kind of finish these guys off like we don't need anything else here to be honest we can just go ahead and summon a vermin tide to give us a little bit of stopping power to help out against some of those uh those flagellants and good so the mainline fight's going well i would say uh we do have some troops on auxiliary i guess we can just use them to intercept those very tattered knights and we do have a pestilent breath is there anywhere to even use it yeah we might be able to clip ah, i missed i missed i missed horribly <laughs> All right, great. So the Doom Wheel in here seems to be doing good, kind of mass routing his troops. And uh, what does he have in the front? So we can go ahead and pop this, and we want to use the Libra Bubonicus on Volkmar the Grim, kind of start wearing him down. And the Doom Wheel is just kind of running shop right now. And our gutter runners are almost in the back. One of them's kind of got dragged down a little bit by those great swords, which is fine. And the Doom Wheel is actually one of its best targets in the game. Is is that you know group of great swords? You know, very heavily armored. Let's actually get these gutter runners and have them go shut down these free company. We don't want any gunfire. These guys can sit in the back and kind of keep shooting. We have some knights coming back, but I feel like our blob's in good shape, so let's kind of keep doing it to it. Plague Monk's really winning out pretty large here. We have some Rad Ogres. Um, for the Rad Ogres, you want them fighting Great Swords. Great Swords, Cav, those type of units, and it should be fine, so. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, our Gutter Runners finishing those guys off. Our Plague Furnace and Company looks like they've won this battle very, very decisively on that side. Over here, we can just kind of collapse on the back of those Great Swords with the rest of our troops, and. Uh, yeah, I honestly think that's it. I, I really don't know what else he can do at this point. I mean, the Rat Lord is taking a bit of damage. Let's go ahead and drop Wither right here. I'm just kind of scurry back. And, uh, oh, actually, he is doing really good damage to Skrull, so maybe he could pull out some sort of a win that way. We'll use Blades of Future Faction, and these guys, let's go ahead and collapse. Let's get the Doom Wheel in there as well to kind of free up Skrull. Oh, man, he might be able to pull out a win with this. That's that's very, very, uh, very good stuff. So Skrull just got just beaten on. And he hadn't taken damage for most of the game, so I wasn't really concerned about him, but... You know, all of a sudden that came out of nowhere. That was that was pretty good. So, our little gutter runners are just going to be kind of engaging and trolling and having a good time. And Skrulk is going to get pushed off, but looks like he's going to get away. And from there, he'll come back, and we can use his spells and everything. And so let's pull these guys over here. Looks like there's some sort of a spell, so let's actually pull these guys back if we can. I think we dodged a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I mean, we we definitely took the brunt of that. So our gutter runners, um, we can go ahead and have them start throwing at those great swords. And our warlock engineer is going to provide some pretty good AP in the pocket as well. Rad Ogres are back, and so is Scroll. Great. So let's go ahead and engage on those guys. We have uh, Gutter Runners going to shut down his Gunners. Yeah, let's go ahead and make sure to just actually get on those guys. And these guys can shut down this group, and good. Warlock Engineer needs to get in there and fight the good fight. And it looks like Volkmar is getting hunted pretty hard here. I would really like to get one more charge of the Libra Bubonicus. So let's go ahead and summon some rats right here. Get these Rad Ogres kind of screening, and see if we can pull Scroll back a little bit. That would be really good. Great. So Doom Wheel's here. Um, the Doom Wheel, we want to just have it focusing like the very high-value targets. Skrulk is, uh, you know, he's being a rat. It's kind of, you know, what you would expect from him, right? I'm not sure what all those sound effects are. It sounds pretty wild. But in the back, like, his whole army's pretty much dead. He just has Volkmar and, like, a warrior priest. And, uh, that's gonna be it. We did it. Glorious. Alright, let's see. Just came in, digging the mic. Hey, Robin, I'm glad you're enjoying the microphone. Anthony says, what can men do against such reckless hate? Well, there's a lot of rats. And, you know, I liked his build. It was really cool, actually. But uh, he just kind of, you know, the, the Free Company Militia were relatively ineffective, I would say. Yeah, Gary. Oh, hey, Gary. Sorry I didn't see you earlier. Yeah, no, I got that one earlier. Yeah. I did. Yeah, Gary, the friendly laser lizard is in chat now. This is why we can't have good things. Uh, Skitter Leap Doom Wheel is like, it's like one of those things that's fun. Like, so recently I've been taking a really deep dive into, like, Warhammer 40k. And, uh, and uh, like, looking at a lot of, like, the stratagems and, like, for example, the Death Guard in 40k, they have this really, you know, expensive elite unit, and he allows you to do a big wombo combo with a bunch of Plague Marines and Blight Grenades, and it's, like, it looks really fun on paper, but it's not going to be, like, practical across the board, right? So it's going to be inconsistent. So I kind of feel the same way about, like, things like Skitter Leap and giving your giants stock with the green skins and, like, all those shenanigans like that, so, yeah. Uh, so, we want some Wood Elves? I think we want some widows. Mel Gibson isn't the best against the Empire, but I promised it for Anthony, so we're we're doing it. We're doing it to it. Yeah, it's how it's our you know. There's something. Waystalkers. I've I've always wanted to use start using them again, but oh this is a fun matchup, actually. I think Mel Gibson's okay here. So we're gonna get these abilities here. 
And do we want to get the pendulum? We can get the pendulum just for laughs and gas. Don't be a space wee, Barry. <laughs> the space wee about the towel. That's really funny. Hey, Saud. My apologies if I mangled your name, but glad you're enjoying the live stream. Yeah, I'm using... The reason why there's a potato and a microphone is because I'm using a, a different mic. I'm on the road right now. Glade Riders with Hackman Tips are seriously like MVPs yes. here. They're so good. Dryads are also very good. Um, not very good, but they trade okay. And War Dancers. We need a little stopping power. Because like Dark Elves can go very wide. If they go like... Yeah, it's. I think having heavy infantry is, is like pretty decent here. Do we want Hawk Riders? So Mel Gibson, Frontline, Dryads will trade well with Bleak Swords and Dread Spears. So if he goes that route, it's pretty good. Same with the War Dancers. If he does go with like uh, uh, Hargan F and things like that, hopefully we can tie them down with Eternal Guards. It's kind of the direction we're going. Um, let's also get some Wild Riders with Shields. And I could go with like traditional Missile Play, like using the Glade Guards with Starfire Shafts to like focus on Malekith. That's like the one place it's good, but it's not as good unless you have Prey of an Othrama. So that's kind of why I'm a, a bit on the fence. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Poland right now. I'm with my, my lovely fiance. We're having a great time. She's the best. Yeah, glad to hear. I'm actually, yeah, I'm working on a Death Guard list right now. So if any of you guys would be interested in seeing the list I'm working on, it's like a Death Guard. It does have a, a, a patrol detachment of a, of a, a, a what, are they, what are those guys called? The, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like a patrol detachment that gives you access to warp time and uh, pre-science. Uh, I think it's like prescience or pre-science or something. I can't remember. Okay, so Wild Riders will be pretty good because we can like drag things down and, and hopefully open up some pockets. Hawk Riders seemed like they could be okay though because the range on the Dark Elf missiles are really short and they give you pretty good armor piercing. So maybe we do that and then we just get like... And then we just Chevron? Yeah, Mel Gibson will carry us into the good night. Hey Vapor, welcome to the stream, dude. A mass no, no goblins this game. Yeah, so I'm in Poland uh, visiting Anna. Where I'm, I'm here from, uh, well, I, I got here December 19th and I'll be staying until uh, January 4th, so a couple more days here. And uh, and then I'll be back to California. Uh, you guys have probably noticed a bit of a lapse in my videos. It's just because, you know, I'm on the road. So I had a couple preloaded, but obviously I, I'm running out. <laughs> so. But thankfully, Anna and I bought a computer together in Poland when I lived here, and uh, we have a really good one. So I'm able to play, but I just didn't bring all my, like, camera equipment for the webcam and the green screen and, like, you know, the high-quality microphone and all that. So, Yeah, I hope you have a great New Year's, too, uh, Saud. <laughs> you like getting baked and watching the streams? All right. Yes, this stream will be uploaded to YouTube later. I, I just forgot to check that, that box the other day, so I, I failed. I failed you guys. Great. So we got our uh, we got our line here. It's a bit of a we're putting a lot of marbles in these glade riders. We need to get some pretty good value. Mel Gibson. I'm gonna put him in front. Uh, the reason you put him in front is because he throws his spears and does some heavy lifting. Two, three, four. Try a full wood wood build. I've tried a full wood builds. They're not the best. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good Walmart, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm traveling right now, so there's no no face cam. I'm like uh I'm in another country. <laughs> All right, so I'm a little hesitant to start off over here, but with the Wild Riders being able to Vanguard, we should be able to be okay. Because they can, you know, pull pretty quick support. Let's get these guys here. And, uh, yeah. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about the microphone. Well, I, I named the stream Potato Microphone Livestream, so hopefully you guys have been warned adequately. Um, Coda Total War, I think he stopped doing YouTube. Yeah, it was too bad, he had, he had a lot of cool videos. Really good production value, really nice guy too. Um, okay, so he's got, he's got, yeah, Hargeneth, we should be fine here, I think. He's, he's gotta have something hidden in the forest though, because his army's so freaking small. I don't even know how that's possible. He does have some Witch Elves in the back. So what you want to do is uh, use the Glade Riders to take down the Witch Elves. These guys can just start shooting at the Witch Elves as well. Aha! The plot thickens. Okay, so he has some he has some like deep uh, deep vanguard action going on. So he actually has shades. So we can start shooting the shades right now. Let's pull these wild riders around the back. Okay, so he gets like a bit of a chill wind on us. So we're gonna kind of keep running and just having a good old time. 
these guys we can go ahead and just engage and the hawk riders we can go and uh pull back real quick great so yeah we're just going to kind of ride dirty around him see what we can do he does have witch elves like guarding him so we're just going to like do our drive-bys mel gibson in the front should be pretty good good and let's pull these drives around the back here let's pull these guys over here and the hawk riders we can go ahead and shoot here great so we're kiting and fight having a good old time we're going to actually engage on those shades right now use the hawk's talon as well back here and the Hounds of Gibson we'll use in just a moment. It should be pretty strong once we get it off. So yeah, uh, these Wild Riders are going to apply some pretty good pressure. And we do get the Bombardment. And yeah, okay, so we get into the back line, which is very, very juicy-like. About the Hounds, let's collapse with the Dryads here. And these guys can go ahead and keep trolling here. And our Glade Riders are, you know, putting in good work. They're, like, pressuring and being very aggressive. And we probably want to get an Earthblood right here. That's going to be good. So you guys kind of need to keep moving. Let's get you guys engaging on those shades there. And great. So we got our Firing Line. As long as Malekith keeps chasing them, like, I'm okay with that. Like, no problem. But I think it's going to be hard for him. We've really compromised his backline quite a bit. I mean, he had some repeater crossbows and, like, deep vanguard, but honestly, it's it's not going to be that devastating. So Mel Gibson can keep working there. And, uh, oh, he, he got a bunch of damage on our caster here, so that's not good. So we got really sloppy with that. So let's see if we can at least get some spells off before he goes down. Let's pull you over here. Backline's pretty compromised. And, dude, we got that pendulum off. That was really clutch that we got that. Oh man, our army's looking really melted. I actually was feeling like in better shape than we actually were. So let's pull these guys back in here. Get Mel Gibson kind of unified with them. Keep working on Malekith and the Hawk Riders. Um, let's actually go and see if we can swarm these guys. Just pull all these guys in melee and just see if we can just like run those guys over and just plow them. So let's go here. Um, let's go here as well. Get these Dryads kind of fighting those guys. And hopefully we can do it to it. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good little backline swarm. So the Branch Wraith is here. Um, let's go ahead and use Earthblood over here on Mel Gibson and company. Just kind of keep shutting down the Shades. They're very expensive, so I'd like to finish them off. Get these guys on the Bleak Swords, and yeah, okay. So that's going well. Um, it looks like his uh, Death Hag here is taking a bit of damage. We don't have too many troops coming back. We can go ahead and form a bit of a last stand over here. And yeah, so far so good. I mean, the Shades are slowly going down. They're shaking. They're getting swarmed. And Mel Gibson is, you know, angry and ready to party as always. Let's pop Hawk's Talon over there on those guys. Kind of keep looking around. We have our Branch Wraith. We have these guys back online, so let's get them shooting here. We do have a Melkos, so Melkos would be a pretty good choice against the Harganeth Executioners. So, yeah, we're really just going crazy in this back line, though. <laughs> it's getting hog wild, and it looks like Mel Gibson's just absolutely destroying this uh, this hag over here. So let's pop this as well, the Hounds of Gibson, and we have a Hawk's Talon. We can. We, looks like we can pop it right here. Great. So the Cav, let's get them going after these guys, and uh, yeah, just kind of keep chasing those shades around. And this guy looks like it's done. We can actually pull these guys to uh, finish that off. Use Mel Gibson and company to win the melee engagement. And uh, yeah, so far so good. So we're just kind of keep chasing the shades down. They're a strong unit. I'm really surprised they haven't broken yet. You think they would have, but he is going to be isolating my shade here, which is a little bit dangerous. But I want to make sure ah, the death hag's pretty broken. So I think we can pull over there. And yeah, no more no more tricky business from Mel Gibson for now. And uh, let's get these guys to help out with the shades here. These guys can go after this group. And good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this Argoneth Executioner has got broken. Let's go finish off these guys. Malakith is going to be hard to kill, but Orion is, is a beast, too. So there's there's no underestimating him. I think at this point, the most prudent decision would be to save up for an Earthblood, for sure. But yeah, we should be able to finish off these repeater crossbows right now. Hoeth would agree. Apparently, he would. Great, so these guys are done for. Um, we can go ahead and... Oh, no, watch out for the breath attacks. Oh, dude, I love Kilbasa. It's my favorite. It's my, it's my favorite. Kill boss is so good. All right, so um, it's going pretty well. Oh, Malik is getting, he's getting real aggressive trying to shut us down. But in the meantime, Mel Gibson is just pounding on his front line over here. We are beating it like a drum. We have 18 Hawk Riders here too, which is really nice. Let's actually pull those guys back towards the main fight. See if we can take them off skirmish mode. Just kind of keep running back there. And the shades, um, we want to make sure to finish them off. Even, even just a couple shades can be very, very devastating. So these guys are done for, which is good. Harganeth Executioners, let's switch them to range and start shooting there. And uh, yeah, it's going okay. Looks like we have, do have a group coming back as well. We can use them to ride down some of these bleak swords. And what does he have? Yeah, just the Harganeth. So we'll go ahead and push those guys. We'll use armor piercing from the Eagles. The Great Eagles actually have really good armor piercing values. So Kiel Boss is my favorite. I freaking love it. Oh, didn't want to do that. Check this out. The Eagles cometh for you. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, get in there. Spear them. We do have the Hounds of Gibson, too, so we can use that. Let's use it on these guys as they approach. Oh, yes. Get them, my Hounds. All right, so Malachus in the forest. Looks like he was able to kind of corral some of our uh, riders. 
is unfortunate. Let's pull these guys back here as well. Sorry, I got a little excited showing you guys that stuff. Let's get these guys here and have them start shooting at those uh, witch elves right there. And it looks like we've been able to polish off most of these troops. I think we just go after the witch elves now. Definitely need to make sure they die. We can shoot here. Actually, let's just engage in melee and just make sure they get get off the battlefield. Malchus kind of low, actually, even from just chasing those guys. But, uh, I mean, we do have some damage on us as well. You know, we're, we're no spring chickens, as they say. Pierogies are great. And his mom has uh, made us a bunch of pierogies, and it was extremely good. Yes, good. So we do have an earth blood, so um, right now I think we just kind of, uh, let's actually just dogpile on these witch elves. And then from there we can use an earth blood to, uh, you know, uh, greater value. So let's do that. And good. All right, so now everyone's bunched up. We can go ahead and overcast, or just do a regular cast, earth blood. And we can use Melkos on Malekith, which is not going to do a ton of damage, but it's going to slow him. So, yeah, if he decides to land, we can just swarm him and he won't be able to get away as easy. Great. So that's done. Let's get the Hawk Riders back here. Oh, Malekith's just going to get pounded by Mel Gibson right now. He's, he's pretty low, probably. Yeah, 1900 HP, give or take. Yeah, he's, he's going down. That's it. GG to my opponent. I don't know why his name sounds familiar. Madsec. Maybe from, like, another RTS game. Oh, Ryan wanted to use his spear in melee like a true boss. Let me see here. Having a good old time. I was just listening to the microphone playback. Oh my god, that's such a potato. But yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan of shades in this matchup. I, I think they're like lightly armored, and a lot of the Witch Elf troops can really hammer them for the cost, but... Uh, I mean, maybe he's had success with them in melee, too. Like, they were really hard to kill. Like, if Dark Shards would have died, like, instantly to that type of backline pressure. So, maybe there is something to be said about that. Yeah, I think I think perhaps... I mean, the Bleak Swords are decent. The Harganath, like, his front line was imposing. But my front line was much thicker. Um, also, the Repeater Crossbows, I felt like they didn't really have a, that much of a purpose. Like, he could have used regular Dark Riders and then gotten more infantry. And for that same kind of style, I think would have been really, really strong. Do any so? Uh, do any of you guys in chat play? Uh, I, I know a lot of you guys play 40k, but um, do any of you guys? Uh, what's it called? Play Death Guard. The new, uh, obviously, the new Nurgle, Space Marine kind of deal. The Heretic Astartes. If you do, let me know. Uh, I, I have some questions. <laughs> Screaming Skull Catapult. Yeah, guys, we'll probably do a couple more games. Uh, I'm actually going to be going out with Anna relatively soon, so it's going to be a relatively short stream today. We're fighting the crazy dwarf. Okay, I feel like we need to do a sneaky goblin build, so... It's time. It is time, which is Gotham's Reckoning. We're going to... Oh, no, he can't Vanguard, though, so we need the Goblin Great Shaman. What map are we on? I hate these wooded maps. I hope he plays dwarves. Let's see. Yeah, we got a lot of options here. Yeah, the dwarves are going to have a great time versus the... Oh, man. Goblins versus vampire counts. Ugh. That's like the worst matchup on the planet. But you know what? I'm a patriot of the goblins. I'm a, I'm a big fan. So we're going to we're gonna not let you guys down. Um, these guys, can they vanguard? They cannot. So we're going to get these little gobbos here. And then uh, you need a couple of fanatics just to like hold things together in the front line. Oh man, this is this is going to be hard. Nasty skulkers um, in the back line to kind of deal with cab and things like that. We'll get a couple more fanatics here, and it's mass vanguard too. So let's get just night goblin archers. Obviously, are really solid. Dirkit squigs aren't good against vampires traditionally, but it's like for playing goblins, it's what we have access to. The biggest strength we have against them is going to be like our missile skirmishers, for sure. And we'll get the Arachnaut Queen. It's technically like kind of a goblin unit, so. Um, okay. This will do, Pig. This will do. I feel like I need maybe one more group of uh, the... So cut these guys and then we get more nasty skulkers. I mean, at least they have AP, right, against like the uh, the big baddies. And the smoke bombs is going to be pretty useful. So let's, let's go ahead and chevron those guys up. Cut one more group of archers. And uh, let's get, actually, you know, I think some regular gobos would be good just to deal with zombies and stuff in the back, like when you start spam summoning them. All right, let's do it. I've been doing goblins forever. 
Okay, so you, you play uh, you play Death Guard, so... Yeah, what are your opinions? Uh, so, basically, I kind of have a, a fairly comprehensive understanding of the Death Guard, but my big issue with them right now is I kind of don't have the best perception of, uh, of their anti-tank. Like, they have great infantry with, like, Plague Spitters and Fetid Blow Drones, and, and uh, you know, pretty much everything of theirs is pretty good against infantry, but... My biggest issue is like anti-tank now. I have a Demon Prince, uh, you know, the Malefic Claws to deal with that. Uh, you know, the Foul Blight Spawns can melt tanks pretty well with their, because they roll for their strength. It's 2d6, so they can just be insane um, and do like massive wounds. But I don't know. I feel like I need one or two more things. So if you have any suggestions, let me know, brother. I would much appreciate it, uh, Carter. Yeah, so we're doing Mass Goblins versus the, uh, the Vampire Counts. It's uh, going to be a good time. I'm really excited for Tomb Kings, though. I want to do, like, a massive battle with, like, Tomb Kings and Chaos Chariots just colliding. That's, like, the only time I've ever wanted to do a massive battle in this game. Yeah, I'm excited, though. I'm, re I'm real excited for the for the Tomb Kings. Hopefully, we'll get some, uh, we'll get some early access or something. You never know. I'm sure it'll happen. That would be... And we'll, we'll, I'll make sure to have some good battles with uh, with the other tubers. Yeah, I really, I, I would love to have Norska back though. Norska was a really fun faction, but you know, the amount of time we got to play them was very limited. I, I feel like people didn't really get a true mastery over them, but they, I love the enrage mechanic on Norska and like their lords are really fun. Throg is fun. Uh, Wolfric is super cool. Like hero isolation, he has like a cool cone ability. Well, a uh, wind ability, it's not even a cone. Spam chariots. I know, the potato's real. My apologies. Oh yeah, I'm sure Creative Assembly has tons of projects going on. So, um, <laughs> like, vanguarding against vampires is so counterintuitive, because, like, they want to close that distance. It's just, like, if anything, it's, like, makes the game more enjoyable for you guys, right? Because it just gets straight to business. Well, the goblins said they're going to kill him, so I'm inclined to believe them. Oh, yeah, that's right. These goblins can't vanguard. Oh, I'm such a noob. Oh, well. We'll just put these guys right here for now. Okay, great. Uh, skulkers with their prison shanks. Prison shanks. And squig hoppers. Squig hoppers here. Squig hoppers are really fun units. Goblin Great Shaman. These guys can be in group two. Ragnarok Queen is going to have her little escort in the back here just pushing forward. And uh, we can get some, some more skulkers kind of on the outskirts. Basically, these guys are just going to be, if Blood Knights come or anything like that, we're going to try and grab them and slow them. Just to buy time for our, our squad. Alright. I'm feeling pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are uh, on the stream. And yeah, it'll uh, it'll be going up on YouTube later for anyone who wants to watch it back. Hey, thank you, Oathstone. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. More to come, man. I got I got a lot of stuff planned. We're gonna be doing some like big tournaments and just all kinds of shenanigans and everything, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I could go with the last Predators for the Death Guard, but I honestly feel like if I'm aggressive enough with like uh, uh, my Pox Walkers and my Demon Prince and the the Demon Prince has Arc Contaminator, so he gets allows you to reroll wounds on Plague Weapons. So basically the Fetid Blow Drones auto hit with their Plague Weapons, right? And with the Demon Prince, they get to reroll on the Wound Attempt. And uh, I feel like like those guys can be Tank Hunters. It's, it's not optimal, but... I feel like I'm going to crush infantry so hard with the list that it's okay if I'm not the best at killing tanks and stuff. So, I don't know. A little bit of ranting. My apologies. Alright, so let's get these guys kind of uh, going after the Lord here. Get these guys kind of pushing forward as well. And these guys, we just want to do this. Alright, great. So the goblins are uh, they're in for a tough a tough ride here, to say the least. But we do have a ton of stopping power up on that Flying Lord, though. Looks like he's going to be using a Fate of Bune on us. Maybe. Give or take. I think so. So these guys can go ahead and uh, try and shut down those Blood Knights. Let's go ahead and get these goblins kind of scurrying out here, here, here. And uh, let's actually just go here. The goblins can fight there. And our lords, we want to also shoot his flying dude. That's going to be pretty important here. These guys can go here and good. So the Arachnaut Queen and company, we can just go ahead and engage them in the main fight. And yeah, everything's going relatively well. He did get a really good Fate of Buna. Not much we can do about that, to be honest. So we're just going to kind of keep pulling back. Dirk at Squigs. We're actually going to use them to fight Blood Knights with a bunch of other angry gobos. So that's a force engage here, and that's going to allow us to get a smoke bomb off on those guys, hopefully. Great. So here we have uh, the Itchy Nuisance. We can pop that here. 
to get the spiders going there as well. And here, we want to make sure to get that smoke bomb so we can't get away. So we get the smoke bomb, and then we get us around with a ton of stuff. So hopefully we can just win with like pure numbers. Let's go here, here, and our archers need to be pulled back right now. And we do have some squeak hoppers to go uh, clean up those fell bats. Okay, great. So now we have Curse of the Bad Moon, so we can go ahead and pop that um, right over here on the Sternsman. It's not the best ability, but it's really fun. So we're going to do this. We're going to go here. Ooh, that's really bad, that jump on my lord. Hopefully I can kind of rally from that. Okay, so these guys can kind of uh, shoot him down. Ragnarok Queen's having a good old time back here, it looks like. Summon some spider links as well. And great. So my lord should rally. I mean, he's really squishy, but we are getting a beatdown on these Blood Knights. Just straight up bully beatdown, so... Just kind of keep working on Manny. Gobbo's back back in business let's get these guys going push them into the main fight and i actually feel like it's going really well in the mainline fight although he does have a bunch of blood knights so let's see if we can muck these guys up these archers kind of coming after his lord here and the gobos arcane conduit kind of lurk nearby yeah we can we can we get a smoke bomb can we get the smoke bomb do we get him oh i'm so good I'm so good at these goblins so we actually smoke bomb those hounds right there which uh, basically pinned them down and yeah, a bit of a routing situation over here, but I still think we did some pretty decent damage. Nasty Skulkers, um, we can get you guys going after these Graveguard here. The Ragnarok Queen's in really good shape, but it is surrounded by Blood Knights, which is like worst case scenario. So let's go here, run the Queen, and use the Spiderlings right there to bo bog down those Blood Knights. Check on our Lord again, make sure he's okay. We want to use Itchy Nuisance right there on that block. So that is a lot of stopping power coming on to Manfred. I am not complaining, but let's switch to those Blood Knights real quick. Great, so check for routing units too. We do have some guys rallying, so we'll get them back in. Up here, we probably have some guys rallying as well. we'll get them on the Blood Knights. And uh, yeah, those Blood Knights are going to do some work, unfortunately. So I think we just kind of commit to this side of the battle, and hopefully we can do it. Curse of the Midnight went there. Blood Knights here, kind of getting dragged into the mud. Let's use the Fanatics here. Not the best use, but we don't really have choices. Great. So um, he gets a bit of a charge right there on us, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but we have done pretty lethal damage to those guys. The curse did a bad moon, didn't do a whole lot there, but it is what it is. Great, so let's kind of keep pushing here, and uh, if he goes in with Manfred, we might be able to switch and actually get some really good deeps on him. Uh, so we're going to use Smoke Bomb. Oh, we, oh, they routed right when I wanted to use Smoke Bomb. That's too bad. So let's get some spiders. I think it was a terror route, though, so maybe they'll come back. Yeah, I think that, that might actually be okay. So these guys, let's uh, get them over here, have them start shooting Manny. These guys can collapse here. And we do have Sneaky Stabbing, so let's go ahead and use that on our spider. Just going to give it some uh, some good buffs. Okay, okay, a little bit of a uh, little bit of pressure, but let's let's pull over here and kind of uh, consolidate all of our forces. Hopefully, I think. Man, it's it's too bad those blood knights are still in line. Such trolls. Yeah, they're so low. Maybe we can actually just rear charge them and see if we can finish them. Let's get the spiderlings over there too. And the Arachnot queen is really just doing work. I don't know. It's looking okay. As long as our lord doesn't get cheesed by Manfred, let's actually just hide him in the forest. I think that's probably prudent. These guys can go here. And the blood knights are getting dragged down by just mountains and mountains of goblins. Yeah, a good breath attack, though. That was really bad. So let's go ahead and pop Smoke Bomb, like, before things get a little too hog wild over here. Let's get some uh, some of these these Spiderlings over here. Just kind of keep running through. Spiderlings we want on the Blood Knights. And, uh, oh, man, that's so much stuff. Oh, man. All right, so we need to get you back. Let's run the Blood Knights back in here. These Gabos are polishing off those guys. And the most important thing is kind of finishing those Blood Knights off, because those things are just a terror in the night. And this is going pretty well here, actually. Oh, man, we just melted that contingent, so... Three form ranks. Um, our goblin boss. Oh no, how did he get in there? Oh, that might have cost us the game. Not sure how he got caught. Damn, that was sloppy. I guess he must have been like a control group or something. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to see if we can kind of collapse on these blood knights and maybe finish them off. It's going to be hard to say, but we do have a ton of stuff here. So if that little goblin can get away, we might be okay. My, my little goblin, he's trying. Okay, so we're going to start shooting at Manfred a little bit. Just, or I guess just into this blob in general. And uh, can we get a smoke bomb? Yeah, but it's not really gonna hit anything impactful. We have some spider links, so I think we summon them over here to like try and save our guy. Ooh, that was that was a nasty little breath attack. Okay, so we did squeak away, which is huge. And we have spider links to kind of counter the chase. Let's get these arrows kind of focusing Manny here. These guys can focus Manfred as well. And these skulkers can finish off those graveguard. So we might have trouble finishing off the queen. That's the one thing we really, really have going for us here. We have a ton of guys rallying back in, and I really hope he comes back. That would give us uh, that would give us one more kind of strong power of that that stabbing. So um, we do have a smoke bomb here. These guys are crumbling, which is great. Manfred's being dragged down by a bunch of angry spiders, and now we have uh, arrow fire on them, which is good. All right. So yeah, the forces are kind of collapsing, and it looks like our Gabo did kind of rally here. So we want to buff the uh, the queen here, although it looks like she's probably about to go down to Manfred. 
Not sure. Let's actually just pull through. And once he runs out of zombies too, it's gonna make us quite a bit stronger. Hey Atticus, thanks for the donation, man. Happy New Year's to you too. Looking forward to uh, playing with you when I get back soon. All right, so we're gonna engage these guys here. The queen looks like she might survive. And honestly, even though it looks bad, I, f I feel like we're in okay shape. Because Manfred's starting to get like just domed right now. Do we have any skulkers in here we can drop? Death's creepers are out of ammo for the most part. And the queens, okay, she's stable now. So we can re-engage here. Let's go ahead and collapse on these blood knights here. And my goblin boss is just lurking in the forest. All right, we're trying. Oh, he's coming for me. He's coming for me. So let's get the Death Creepers here. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, we have a smoke bomb at least in like 10 seconds. So come on, get that focus fire on Manfred. If we can gun him down, I think we're okay. And let's get the Skulkers in here as well. I love how my goblin is just cackling in the forest, just sitting here, just... <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going so great. All right, so we do have a, the sneaky stab in here. The lads are ready. The lads are ready. Oh man, he has so much stuff left though. It's kind of stressful, but Manfred's really low. I mean, this is like the worst matchup for goblins, I feel. They all like cause fear, right? So it's, uh, hopefully he comes back. Come on, buddy, I need you. Skarsnik is here. Skarsnik's overwatching, you know? Making sure everything's going well from a distance. All right, he rallied, which is good. So if we can get the spider back, maybe. It's, it's looking, leadership's gonna be a big issue for us though. Smoke bomb, slow those guys down. I don't know, you never know. It could happen. So the Ragnarok Queen is gonna keep doing it. We're just gonna keep shooting in here. Getting these goblins pushing in as well. Quite a ferocious battle. Manfred's very scary though. But look, I mean, his most of his army is going down pretty good here. Maybe these guys can do it. Come on, Queen. I'm using a goblin build. And Anna's, Anna's watching, she loves the loves the Skarsnik, but Skarsnik's uh, overwatching from his... Oh, but the Bounce of Power doesn't seem so bad. I am the Skarsnik. It's like Palpatine with the Senate. We tried. The Goblins failed against Vampires, but it was a really close game, and I feel like he was a good player too, so I'll chalk that one off. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, guys, for... Uh... It wasn't a defeat. It was a tactical retreat. That's how it always is with Goblins, for sure. We'll be back in greater numbers. All right, so uh, yeah, Atticus, thank you. Uh, Cream Wheat, Merry Christmas, Turin, Lady Turin. Looking forward to more information. Yeah, looking forward to playing Cream and Cream Wheat. <laughs> you're, you're, you actually really fit the donation gif as well with Randy Savage. That was a really good game. That was one of the more fun ones on the stream, I would say. So this will probably be the last one here, guys. We're just gonna do one more game and, and uh, you know, have a good time. I haven't tried x rays for uh, Denver Griffin Knights, no. I, I really haven't. Yeah. It seems, it seems like it could be an, a bit of an interesting niche. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I honestly think we might have been okay if I hadn't screwed up with my lord and ran him into Manfred at one point. That, like, cost us a lot, a lot of marbles. Like, we got punked for all of our schoolyard marbles right there. Gobble King would be proud, yes. The vampires are like... <laughs> yeah, most likely. Which is a fair theory. All right, so we got the found match bug, so we're gonna go ahead and oh, failed to join selected game. Classic. Your thoughts on the Tomb Kings? Yeah, I'm looking forward to them. It's it's always fun to see new races. The one I really want the most though is the Ogre Kingdoms, probably. Or I mean, Chaos Undivided. Some sort of Chaos Augmentation is like my number one go-to. But like Ogre Kingdoms are gonna be ridiculous and just haggard. Just ogres and, and goblin fodder units. How can you not like that? Hey, thank you, Kaiser Blade 43 Much appreciated, brother. Can we get a ghoul-heavy army? Well, I already played Vampires. Is it true Eastern Europe? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, so we're on the found match here. And we got We Geek. So who? I want to play someone I haven't played yet. Um, I don't know. Let's see who he picks, maybe. Dwarf Rush. I haven't played Dwarves in a while. I could play Bretonia. Yeah, I really enjoy playing vampires. Halflings would be... Oh my god, halflings would just be the most haggard thing in existence. Yeah, it would just be it would just be glorious. Alright. So, Dark Elves versus High Elves? We could do that. That's always a fun one. 
So you just you just have to watch out for the Tempest here. That's kind of one of the. Actually, I think there's more fun matchups than that. Um, Chaos. Who would you guys want to see? Beastman. Okay, we'll we'll do Beastman. That's fine. Oh, one sec. I can't click with you. That's so funny. All right. Beastman, it is. So we're gonna get Morker. Thank you, darling. Uh, Morker is probably a pretty good choice, unless we want to just be ridiculous and just use Cygors. It's always fun. So, yeah, we'll try Cygors for now. We're not going to go too crazy. We're just going to get one and then Malagor. Uh, for the rest of our army, we'll get a couple of best gore herds. Oh, okay, you can switch to dwarves. That's fine. Beastmen, Brett, Chaos. And it seems like mostly Beastmen, but he already played dwarf, so hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to take me on. It is... Uh, You guys really want Bretonians versus Dwarves? I feel like Beastmen are going to be more fun, though. You guys want the Bretonia? Cygor Smash. <laughs> oh, man. We'll just finish this off. We already selected them, so. Alright, so for the rest of our army, we're, we'll get these guys. And you know what? Just so we're not Cheese Lords, we're going to get uh, Kazrak on his Pimp Chariot. We're going we're gonna to switch it up a little bit. We'll get the Scourge as well. Great. So summoning like in mass like that would be a little bit cheesy. Let's actually, do we want to try death against these guys? Chaos is like my one of my better factions, I would say. All right, let's let's go with death. We're, we're just gonna switch it up. We're gonna get soul blight and uh, soul blight. It's only nine, and this one is yeah. So we can probably afford to use both of these. And, uh, do we want death too? If we can get this, yeah. We don't really need to lower their armor, so we can probably get rid of that. Thank you for the microphone. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so aside from that, we're going to go with a bunch of uh, fodder units just to kind of bolster our infantry lines. Chariots are really good. Uh, harpies are just basically an anti-gyrocopter measure. Let's go one of these guys. Take him off a chariot so we can just chill a little bit. Yeah, Wood Elves are really good, uh, Cream and Wheat, for sure. They're they're a high tier faction. Centaurs with throwing axes are pretty good. Um, they give you good counterplay to Gyrocopter spam. Although I kind of want to use Rangers a little, not not Rangers, but um, let's see if we can maybe squeak in a couple Ungors. Like they're good against Rangers actually. And Slayers, like you can poke down Slayers with those guys. Okay, so we'll get those. We have a Chariot, Centaurs with throwing axes, and. Uh, it's actually go even cheaper. I'm trying to like really maximize the, the width of my army here. So we get those. Central Guards throwing axes. I would, I, two groups could be good. Cause they have good AP. So we can like hide out the dwarves and stuff. Yeah, okay, this will be fun. Good luck to my opponent. We geek, looking forward to uh, the battle brother. Dwarves is great. So we're not going full cheese. If we were going full cheese, it would just be Malagor and two Cygors. Do they not fear death when they see it? Yeah, Game 3's... I'm really excited. I mean, I love the Total War franchise, but Warhammer is by far my favorite. I mean, I loved Shogun 2. Like, it was, it was like, what really got me into... I mean, I played Rome and the original ones and everything, but Shogun 2 was, like, the one that really was the fire. The fire rose. Hey, Atticus, I'm glad you liked the army, dude. And, uh, and yeah. Hold on one second, guys. I can, I can get you a little something-something right now. So one second, my friends. All right, looks like the game's up. Good luck, man. Oh, did I forget to ready up? God, I'm such a plebeian. Okay, so one sec here. All right, guys. Uh, so I'm gonna put a link to Discord in the uh, in the in the chat. So we have a Discord channel for any of you guys who are looking for people to play with. Feel free to come join us. Um, just again, we don't talk. No politics. No spamming. Nothing. You know, racist. That kind of stuff. Just uh. You know, be, be low-key. If you see a chat room that has, like, 10 people in it, maybe start another one with some other people. That kind of thing. <laughs> Just the basics. Basic courtesy. But, yeah, if you guys want, come join. We uh, we play a lot of Total War and stuff. We play Blood Bowl, too. If you're, if you're looking to get Blood Bowl games, it's a really, really good place for that. We go hard in the pan on the Blood Bowl. I have a Dwarf team and a, and a Ogre Kingdom team. I think Ogre Kingdoms will be in Game 3. Yeah, because it's like kind of chaos themed a little bit. I mean, it's not like technically, but you get what I'm saying. 
Alright, so we got these guys. Um, these guys can actually be in Vanguard for now. Uh, Kazrak can be on his Pimp Chariot over here. In the Deathcaster. Fade is actually pretty good. Um, these guys can be in the forest. Santa Gores. They're ready to go. Okay, so the chariot's here. Harpies can be in this group right here, and let's go ahead and get the Cygor up on the hill. There's not any way they can really pressure the Cygor, so we can kind of... Oh, what happened there? So, okay, so these guys just got to make sure they're all in group one. Cygor can be degrouped here, and we want him in group five. He can kind of sit over here. So the Cygor is just so strong after the buffs have gotten more to Our raiders, uh, we just use them to poke down Slayers. I mean, this isn't like the most competitive Beastman build, but it's certainly viable, I think. Yeah. Shogun 2 is an amazing game. It's really, really good. I mean, yeah, the shameful, di shame for a display. That whole meme culture is just amazing. Let's put Kazrak a little closer to the woods in case, like, he has artillery. We can fan out. Avatar Conquest was so good. Oh man. Hey, Silver and Golden Vesting. How you doing, man? It's been a while. Yeah, here's a here's a link to Discord. There you go, buddy. We'll see you on there. But remember, there's different channels for everything. So if you want to share memes and that kind of stuff, there's a channel for that. If you want to promote something of your own channels, there's a section for that. Again, uh, just, you know, no spamming. Keep down the, the trollish behavior. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So Longbeards, oh, looks like he has bolt doors and stuff. So, oh, what have we found over here? Some rangers, eh? So um, these guys, we're going to start, tr you know, trolling around the back. And the Cygor can just start throwing in. And this is going to be a good trade for us. In terms of just, like, cost, we're going to take damage. But we're going to also do some pretty huge damage. So the Cygors, oh, yeah, get those boulders in there. Feels good, man. So in the back, uh, looks like we can start just throwing at these warriors of Dragonfire Pass. We can. Uh, oh, it looks like he does have a bunch of archers, so we need to be careful. That's a lot of archers. My goodness, Rangers are holding up surprisingly well. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm impressed for sure. So let's, uh, let's actually start throwing into these uh, Rangers in the back. I think that's going to be pretty good. So we'll get these guys here, these guys here, and these guys here, and we'll get these Ungors kind of circling out there. And the Harpies can uh, go ahead and shut down the artillery for now. And then the Centaurs, we can go ahead and move around the back. Kazrak, we want to run him over there, and uh, looks like it's going okay. Our raiders are, you know, taking a little damage, but nothing nothing we can't endure. Fate of Una is going to be pretty good on the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. Oh, we did not want to go over there, so let's pull these guys back. A little bit uh, premature on the charge there. These guys, we can charge into the rangers. And Kazrak and company, we want him back there as well. Great. So our Deathcaster, he can fight in the front line. We can go ahead and intercept these Altars raiders and shoot right here. And the Harpies look to be doing the trick. All right, great. So we got our chariots into the back line, which is always always nice. Now that he's compromised, we can go ahead and run our centaurs over and uh, hopefully do well from there. So we're just kind of you know getting our units that are rallying and having a good old time. Kazrak and the boys are. Uh, oh man, this chariot is just just tearing these guys to shreds, which is just brutal. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna kind of sit here and, and just throw for now. Um, we do have another spirit leech, so as long as he's okay, you know we'll be we'll be fine. But yeah, all these all these guys coming in is gonna be pretty hot and heavy. The chariots are just, obviously they're not meant to just be sitting in melee, but they're a little bit bogged up, which is okay. Harpies did really good shutting down the bolt throwers. And the Cygor, let's go ahead and switch him onto these longbeards in the back. And Kazrak, where are you at, homie? Okay. Yeah, we can pop Scourge right now. That's probably fine. Does he have Slayers back here? I don't think so. So, um, let's see if we can get some decent throwing axes on the, these guys right here. Let's pull these guys back and get them ready to party. And, uh, yeah, so far so good. We have another Fade Buna in about 17 seconds. But I think we can go ahead and use a Spirit Leech on this guy. And then we can just charge back in to kind of hopefully finish those guys off. So the best scores in the front really uh, performing very well, I would say. Cygor, you want to like, you know, check him every so often to make sure he's attacking good targets and not like, you know, attack being, attacking, you know, things that are like fighting amongst your infantry. So those rangers are very like, you know, big and juicy. We've gotten some really good damage on that guy, actually. That's nice. That's real nice. Um, so infantry that are healthy. He has a group of long here, pretty much full health. Let's get those guys going here. And the Centaurs, basically just using them to kind of troll a little bit, but we can go into melee and just finish off those Rangers, I think. So Kazrak and the Chariots are uh, still doing really well. Um, we can use them to, uh, yeah, maybe shut down those Rangers on the far side. I think that would be a good use of those guys. Yes. Yes, do it. And our Raiders, I'm telling you, they're pretty good against Rangers. Like, they're just so dirt cheap. And our Deathcaster, we don't want him to be fighting the Dwarf Lord, Grumbrindle. Yeah, definitely not. So, it's kind of shutting down his backline. That's typically what you want to do with the Dwarfs. Their infantry are, are stalwart, but they're not going to, like, you know, just annihilate you. And it looks like he actually does have Slayers. So, um, we can start shooting the Slayers here. Pull Kazrak, like, up and through. And kind of keep scoping out the backline. So, the balance is pretty heavily in our favor. Let's go ahead and just finish off these other Rangers here. Cygor, our Cygor homie. Um, oh, there's actually a target back here for him. 
So what do we want to throw at? Um, everything of his is pretty beat up at this point. So I think we just pull it into melee against Grombi. And see if we can kind of polish that off. Nice little charge here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hey, how's it going, Armando? <laughs> you haven't woken up yet? Yeah, it's an early stream. For sure. Because Anna and I are going to go out and, and get some and feast and uh, live it up a little bit. So. All right, great. So uh, everything's going well here. Let's get the chariots kind of riding over there, riding a little bit dirty. And uh, we do need to finish this guy off. And it looks like we routed those guys. So now that we finish these rangers in melee, we can then switch these Ungors back to range, put them on kite mode, and just kind of target that guy down. We'll get our Death Sorcerer there as well. So Kazrak, the only way we could potentially lose this game at this point is if we were to lose uh, Kazrak to Grand Brindle. So we're just going to kind of ride around, make sure that doesn't happen. These chariots can go over here. And uh, yeah, Harpies are also pretty good against Rangers. They hit really hard against Light Armor, so you usually can get your money's worth. Looks like Grombi is going to be wavering due to army losses at this point. And that's going to be it. Uh, yes, this stream will be uploaded afterwards. No worries. There were some really good games. We had like a, a great Goblin game where I had an epic showdown with the Vampires. The first game was really close too. It was really, really close. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this, this kind of quick little stream here. It was just a little little something something to wet the whistle, <laughs> as they say. But my hands feel pretty good. I'm not going to kind of compromise that. I'm going to go spend some time with the love of my life. We're going to go get some, I don't know, you feeling some sushi, Anna? Yes? She's, she's reading a creepypasta, but she, she most definitely will dig the sushi as I do. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Silver and Gold Investing. Appreciate it. I try my best, Atticus. I try my best, man. It's a little bit of a grudgeon. It's a little bit of a grudgeon. So, some sloppy games on stream, some good ones, you know, a little give and take here and there, but it was definitely uh, a good time. Oh, yeah, and the reason the dwarves bring the bolt thrower is simply to, uh, to uh, hopefully, oh, it looks like the stream's dropping here, is to, uh... oh, no, come back to me, stream. Yeah, I think it was just lagging there. But yeah, the reason the dwarves bring the bolt thrower is simply to uh, to deal with Sigors. That's like it is a decent countermeasure against Sigors. It's not the best, but uh, it, it has worked in the past. But guys, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Uh, I really appreciate all of you guys supporting. Thank you so much for the donations and the sponsors and all that kind of good stuff. It really means a lot. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have a good one. Uh, some big things coming up in January. We're going to be having some big tournaments and more best of five uh, showcases between you know top ladder players and things like that. And, uh, and I will play Dawn of War 3 again once they release some new races. Until then, I'm probably not going to touch it. Uh, also, another expansion on the channel is going to be having uh, 40k battle reports. Uh, we're also going to be having like uh, some guest appearances from Lady Turin. Just all kinds of fun stuff going on. So, so guys, thanks again for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream, and we will see you guys next time. Take care.